This is a continuation of an example from tutorial 9, question 2. This is the part C and D, where we take a look at uh, associative caches, in particular a two-way set associative cache. Uh, I'm going to do a bit of a review first, and then we'll get into the results of an associative cache. So here's the basic problem. Uh, recall that we are going to work with a cache size of eight blocks, um, that we have a block size of four words, that we have 128 addresses in main memory. And we're going to do consider what's happening with a series of memory accesses listed here. I won't go through the details of this because that was in the previous video. So the first step would be to identify the block IDs for each of the memory accesses, remembering that um, when we access a particular memory in main memory, a memory address location in main memory, that we move an entire block. This is due to spatial locality, and that in moving that block, it's possible that there would be other addresses from that same block that would now be available in the cache. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at a two-way set associative cache. A reminder that the cache size is eight blocks. Um, to say that something is a two-way set associative cache means that each set has two blocks. And so since there are eight blocks in our cache and each set has two blocks, this means that there would be four sets in total. And they would be indexed. So we have indexed uh, values for the sets. So we're going to use these index values to identify where a particular, which particular set a block is going to move into. Um, but when it gets to that set, it's going to have a choice of either going into sort of column A or column B. Um, it doesn't really matter which column it goes into as long as there's one available. If there's not one available, then we'll talk about what happens in that situation. So we start off and we want to access uh, address 2 first, and this is block 0000. Now in this case, because we have four sets, that means that we need um, two bits to identify the index for each set, because 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 4. And so now what we're going to do is look at the last two bits of the block IDs to identify an index, and that's going to tell us which set it's going, we're going to go into. In this case, there's nothing at, in the cache at all, so this is guaranteed to be a miss. And um, but there's uh, there's obviously space available in the cache, so we're going to move this address block uh, into the cache. The next address we're going to access is three, which is in the same block zero 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 zero. We look in uh, at the last two bits and see that we're looking at set zero zero we see that that block is already in the cache, so this is a hit. The next thing we're going to access is address 16. This is block 00100. Again, we're looking at the last two bits to indicate which set we should be moving into. So we should be moving into set 00. Um, there is something in that set already. It's not the block we're looking for. Uh, but the good news here is that we have space to move this block into that set, and we don't have to evict this block here. And that could be helpful later on. So we move the block um, that has address 16 into the open space in the set, wherever it may be. The next address we're going to access is address 21. This is in block 00101. Um, there's nothing in that set at all. This is a miss and so we add that to our the first available position within that set. The next address is block 00011. Again there's nothing in that set at all and we'll add that to our cache. But it was a miss because it wasn't in the cache before we did the access. Now we reach a case where I have a, a block ID of 10000. So the uh, set I want to look for this particular block address in is set 00. It turns out that what's in here is not what I'm looking for. Neither of these block addresses, block IDs, 
are the particular lock that contains address 64. So it means I have to evict something at this point. And if I use the least recently used protocol for eviction, I would have noticed that this particular block in um, uh, A, the A section, the A column of this set, was the one that was least recently used. So that's what I'm going to evict under this strategy. And I replace it with this block that contains address 64. Next, uh, we access address 66. That's in the same block that we just accessed, and it's in the cache in under set 00, and so that's a hit. Uh, next, we access address 46. This is, uh, if it exists at all, it's in set 11, but that the block that is currently in that set is not the block that we're looking for. So it's a miss, but again, there's space in, the, in that set, so I can just add it without doing any eviction. Next block is 19. So here we see that uh, this is in set 00, and the good news is that it already is, that block is already in our cache, so that's a hit. Uh, the next access is block 00010, Again, this is uh, there's nothing in that particular set, so that's a miss, and we'll just add it to the cache. Uh, now we're back to accessing um, block 0000. The index position is 00. We see that there are that set is actually full, but neither one of these blocks contains the address that we're interested in. So I'm going to have to do an eviction. And again, I've kept track of which one was the most recently used and which one was the least recently used. And I noticed that it happens to be again in column A. It won't always be in column A. Sometimes it's going to be column B that's the least recently used. It just depends on what the accesses, most recent accesses have been. So this is going to be a miss. And I'm going to evict the um, block that has been least recently used in set 00. And I'm left with this. Now I access block 00101. Uh, that is uh, a hit because what's in the in set 01 uh, matches the block that contains address 22. The next access is 00010. Sorry, 00001. Uh, again, we're looking at set 01, but um, the block that's in there doesn't match what I'm looking for. So I ha it's a miss, and I'm going to add that to the available space in the cache. Next one is 00011. Uh, this is a hit because that block is already in the cache, and I note that that's the most recently used block in that set. And then I access 00001. Again, I have um, a hit here, and I update the fact that this is now the most recently used block in that particular set. Then I have 01010. This has never been a block that's been moved into the cache, so um, we're looking for it in set 10. It's not this block, but there is space, so I don't have to do any eviction. I can just add that to the cache and then access address um, 11 that's in block 00010. And here we're accessing set 10, and the good news is that this is a hit. Uh, note that when we did a direct MAC caching, when we accessed block, uh, the block that contained address 43, it evicted the block that contained address 11 immediately before I wanted to access this. With this two-way set associative cache, I ended up avoiding that problem. There's no guarantees exactly how things are going to work out, but oftentimes the uh, N-way set associative cache will end up keeping thing, something in the cache that we end up using later that otherwise would have been evicted in a direct map caching. So this is the final state of our cache at this point. And we've kept track of what was the most recently used block in the cache so that we knew which block to evict if we had to evict something from a particular set. This was not asked on the assignment question, but let's take a look at what happens with a fully associative cache. So if I have the same memory accesses 
then I continuously um, fill in the empty spaces in the cache as I encounter a new block. So um, the first access is block 00000. 000 000 000. We add that to the cache and then we have a hit on that same block and then we add block 00100 to the cache to the next empty space and then we add block 00101 to the cache to the next empty space and so on. And we continue to do that as long as we have empty spaces in the cache. So the last empty space was taken up here by um, memory address uh, zero or the block address 00001. Um, the next two accesses turned out to be hits, so we didn't have to worry about anything. But the next ac address is something that we haven't previously seen in our cache. So this is going to be a miss, and what we need to do is we need to figure out which what block to evict from this fully associative cache at this point, because uh, because there's no more empty spaces, and so we need to have somehow kept track of what was the least recently used. And if I look up the columns here, I can see that the uh, most recent access was here, um, and then here, and then here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and then here, and then the least recently used access actually was this spot right here. And this is one of the disadvantages of a fully associative cache, is the overhead that it takes, especially if we're going to use a least recently used eviction strategy, uh, keeping track of exactly when things were moved into the cache. We talked also about other strategies like just randomly evicting something that reduces the overhead necessary uh, for keeping track of what to evict if we in fact have a full cache at some point and we have a miss. So in this case we are using the least recently used strategy and we're going to evict this block from the cache and add uh, the block that contains the block 01010 to the cache and then our last step is in fact a hit we we find what we're looking for in this block here so that's a quick overview of uh, associative caches in particular uh, an n-way associative cache and then a fully associative cache